Morning guys, Mark for Ashley Protect Dog Training in Desmond. We're now at the park and we've been working at home. I've been getting used to the dog, used to the the uh, tools, the table and the two bowls. And so um, we're ready now to start increasing his distractions. He's into the grass, he's into having uh, freedom. I let him have a release, went and did uh, potty break. And we're gonna start using the park and then we'll start broadening that out. We'll go to tractor supply, we'll go to other places. We'll start increasing his, his environmental and distractions, right? So he's just getting started with all this, but we've got a good, good flow on it. So I'm gonna use food. No, good. Nope, nope, good. And get him into his anchors, okay? I don't know if you guys have heard me talk about anchors before. Anchors are basically things that you get repetition. They could be a myriad of different things, but it's about consistency and routine that create an anchor. It, it, it gives him something that um, is going to ground the dog to a solid. This is an anchor, his table, because I've been working the table at home. Okay, when I go out and I do certain things, if there's consistency in the pattern, he's used to that, that becomes something that he can hang on to. That's what I call an anchor, right? Yep, it can be an, a mental anchor or a physical anchor. It is, it's basically both, really. If you think about it, it's a physical and a mental anchor. Physically, it's the table, and mentally, it's an anchor for him mentally because he's familiar with it, right? So if you go to a new place and he has a tendency to be real distracted and into other things or be affected by the environment, this is going to give him something to hold on to, right? Yep, that he feels confident with because he remembers it. It's an anchor, right? So... We'll go with that, and that's what I'm using with my tables and my bowls right now is creating an anchor. Yep. Couche. Good. Something he's familiar with. Good. And I just go right into my patterns that I've already built. Good. Nope. Good. Things that he can rely on that he's aware of and familiar. Familiarity, basically, right? Good. I'm going to start trying to clock him. Notice I didn't stop at the front anymore because I don't need to. Good. This will become the new pattern. I don't need to stop here and then go back. I could if I needed to because it's there and his repetition. Good. Good boy, Desmond. Nope. Good, Desmond. Yep. Good boy. Good. There's my pause. And I'm going to go to the bulls. We're going to start mixing in powers of twos and threes, patterns of things that add up to him. So today it's going to be the table the bulls, and then his command to OPA, which is that food right in front of his face that he's familiar with. Okay, so those three things I'll intermittently go back and forth with and build on that using the powers of twos and threes. Good. Notice he didn't go to the ground because I've already corrected him enough times. He's already learned the rules. You're not allowed to go to the ground. Good boy, good. Well, he wants the food. That's a good thing, huh? I'm trying to get him to go the opposite way that he's not he's weak on, right? Remember, we want to build strength in a thousand different ways. I did my little video this morning talking about that and, and uh, basically highlighting the fact that general public, society, feels that because a dog is a Malinois, because it's a Roddy, because it's whatever breed that they think they have perceived attitude about, they think that dog's going to come out of the womb and be, be strong. That's very in, in, incorrect, okay? You have to build strength. It's just like I'm building muscles, just like I said in that other video. It's just kind of like weightlifting. We've got to build this mental strength and physical strength, right? And in this case, it's a mental strength, and dogs go through critical development periods where they're just like a child. They're insecure. They're not sure of their bodies. They're not sure what's going on around them. Yep, your job is to, to understand how to get him through this and how to grow the dog. You hear me talking about that all the time too, growing the dog, right? How do I grow an, a dog? I grow him mentally and physically, both, right? I want to get the dog used to my relationship with him and always being sure of me. Yep, yes, good boy, good. Pattern and routine. So I'm going to do this two or three times and then I'm going to go into a healing exercise. Yep. Things that he's used to, right? Then I'm going to give him a release and we're going to play ball. Nope. Come on. Good boy. Good. Couché. Come on. Yes. Good boy. That's good. There you go. 
good. Voice tones, another thing you'll hear me using a lot. I use my voice tone an awful lot because it communicates to the dog and it gives me what I need tools wise to tell him what's right and what's wrong, right? If I've got a corrective tone or if I've got a high praise, it's giving him, and then I have to learn how to play that instrument. There's another trainer that's online that did a great job of explaining it. And he explained it as brake and gas, right? If I give the dog a very squirrely, yeah, good boy, good, good boy, that's gas, right? If I give the dog, yep, good boy, a corrective tone, and I give him, and I change my voice tone to one of being couché, good. Hear the voice tone change? Good. Good. Calmness, right? That's break. Calm down. Good. You want to get to the point where you learn to play your voice like a fiddle, right? And it's a tool that dogs are very receptive to. Why not use what they have, have God has given them and their ability to communicate? That's why I get a lot of people that don't understand why they wouldn't use their voice. Why wouldn't they use as many communication tools with the dog as they possibly can? It doesn't make any sense to me. Good. But that's society. You want to make rules and want to do things that are really again anti. I mean, we want to grow a dog to a point where you're like Schutzen and you're like a stick up your rear end. You got to be real stiff and real modular. That's to me, I see. I can understand it. They're trying to graduate the dog to a point where they're saying he has no cues, no body language, no nothing. And that's, but the dog's still been trained in cues, believe me. Good, good. Draco, not Draco, listen to me. Desmond, yep. Good boy, good. All right, so now we're going to do a little bit of healing. Then I'm going to go play with the dog. You won't see that. I might spin the camera around, but all we want to do is give the dog a break and let him have fun so that we, there we go. Good boy. This is an anchor just as much as my tools are, guys, meaning he's used to this, right? It's a mental anchor, something he's used to. Desmond, good boy, good. OPA, good. So the other trainer's very heavy into luring, so this dog's already been program to lure, right? Look at that, All right? Yeah, good boy, good. Yes, good boy. Yes, good boy. Desmond, good boy, good. Desmond, good boy. You're winding me up. Another thing you notice, I'm always using a long line. The reason I use a long line for a lot of my work is because I want to let the dog have freedom in, in environment, right? So I'll let the dog go away from me. I'll throw a ball and I have a 20 foot line or 15 in this case that I can step on, that I can grab a lot easier if he gets away from me. I have a control factor. I now have something to be able to grab. If I have a shorter leash or a tab or whatever, I can't grab that in an emergency situation or something that comes up in our environment that I have to control the dog. But with a long line, I can do that. And then I can also let the dog have freedom and run for a distance and get out and play and do things. If I'm out in public, I'm working at tractor supply or I'm working at Home Depot. I can let the dog go down an aisle and say free hunt and let him have that exposure to environment and get away from me, right? And, and, and promote that. So this is what I do. I don't want the dog clinging to me all the time. When I go out in public, a lot of times I'm trying to build strength back to that whole thing. And so I'll use things that'll get the dog away from me. I'll, I'll take my play toy, okay? In this case, I've got this one. And I'll throw it down the aisle. Get it, get it, get it, get it, go get it, get it, get it, go get it, go get it. Good boy. And I, now I've let the dog loose, but I have 15 feet of line that I can grab. Yep, good boy, come on. You, you pull over my camera, I'm going to be mad. All right, guys, Mark Farashi, Protect Dog Training, signing off with Desmond at the park. we got to work. Uh, Drake is going to come out here, too, but Draco's already been through this, so he'll go a lot faster. We're going to do the same thing. We're going to start with the tables, our anchors, our mental anchors, and we'll build, right? So there's nobody out here this morning, which is great. It's a great first time to be here. As I go along, what's important is for me to know my environments because if I know that a place is busy on the weekends and it's too much for the dog to handle, I'll stay away from that location on the weekends. I might come on a weekday in the evening when the traffic, the foot traffic is going to be a lot less. And it all depends on the dog and the, what amount of exposure I want him to have to deal with with environment, right? So I will pick those times in those areas that is most beneficial to that individual dog, right? And I'll slowly build up. Right now in the morning, there's nobody out here. In the afternoon, the kids show up after school and they're all over the park, right? So this is what I'm talking about. Be aware of your, your environmental and when they're going to be busy. On the weekend, I talked about going to um, Bass Pro. On the weekend, it was too much for that one dog. It was with all that roaring of the, of the 
of the waterfall and all that water and then the kids and that, that echo that's in that building causes the dog to be affected by the sound that's coming at him that he's not used to. You hear something? Listen how silent it is out here, right? The dogs get used to that. Noise is a stimulation within their environment that you need to be aware of. It affects the animal, right? So build strength, guys. That's what your whole goal is with the dog. When you're training, it's not just heel, sit down, stay. Good boy, Desmond. Good boy. He's out there having a good time playing by himself. That's great. All right, Mark Foresh, Protect Dog Training, signing off. Have a good day, guys.